Welcome to my Mega Con Tampa haul and thoughts video. Um, yesterday I went to Mega Con Tampa. First time they ever held in Tampa because over the years they've only held in Orlando. And I was able to go yesterday, just yesterday, because, well, I only got one day ticket. One thing I did take away from it that was free wristband. Yeah, I wore this the whole time I was in there. Yeah, the convention, now I went on the Friday, first time I've actually gone on Friday, it wasn't that many people there. Um, now, for the stuff I got signed, let's see, uh, I do have it here in a pile. Um, anyways, um, I got my Nightfall tray signed by uh, Chuck Dixon, who was one of the writers of the story. Yep, I got him to sign that. Uh, let's see, what else? I got a few things signed, not much. Uh, there was one person, there was a couple people I did not get a chance to meet. I'll explain who they are in a minute. Let's see, I got this signed by Chuck Dixon. Hmm, where's that signature? It is, uh, right next to Robin. Mm hmm Yeah, Chuck Dixon signed that. Let's see. This I actually bought from the guy who was selling this issue. I think his name is, uh... Let's see. Satellite Font. I've never read this series. I've heard of it, but I've never read it. Uh, this series is written by uh, Steve Horton. Yeah, he was actually there when I got him to sign this. I talked to him for a little while about IDW stuff. It was fun to meet. It was fun to talk to this guy. Um, also, for Chuck Dixon, um, I got a chance to ask him a bunch of stuff about his work. Like, like what went into the creation of Bane. Like, like... Basically, he explained it like how it normally is explained, which is pretty simple to be a good point of Batman. Now, spoiler, uh, Stephanie Brown was simply just, oh yeah, she's the daughter of the Clue Master. She, and initially, Chuck Dixon created her to be a one-off character, but apparently people loved her. So, uh, there was a, this is according to him, there was a letter campaign to get her brought back as a regular character. So Dixon put him, put her in the Robin book. Okay, and the reason why he got uh, Nightwing and did it as long as he did. Now I didn't talk to uh, I I did mention to him that Link Hard did do a retrospective of the Blue Beetle and did references from Birds of Prey, and, and I did recommend checking out. He says he said he would. Um, the reason why he got Nightwing because initially the book was going to go to Danny O'Neill and uh, Alan Grant. But they bailed one week prior to when the first script was supposed to be turned in. And so Chuck said, oh, yeah, okay. So he got the book. And he um, was assigned Scott McDaniel as the artist. He's like, okay. Um, and he was given the premise for basically it's the premise people a lot of people know about. Like, like now he was at Bloodhaven. And pretty much like every issue had a ripoff of a Jackie Chan movie. And that's kind of what his run was. A rip up of Jackie Chan movies, which okay. Now he did not like it when during Infinite Crisis, when uh, when Blood Haven got blown up, pretty much killed all of his characters he created, um, except two. Well, actually, it was one character he did create. They did say, but Gail Smunk killed her off in Secret Six, and that what well, actually it was not Secret Six. It was uh, yeah, let Lady Vic was the only one who actually was able to survive. And most that he created was killed off. In Crisis of Infinite, uh, on Infinite, in Infinite Crisis, he was not happy about that. He was also not happy when 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 Stephanie Brown was killed. So basically, he came back in, uh, did an arc for Robin where he brought the character back, and the reason why his one was cut short because he was fired from the book. Okay, that kind of does explain that. Um, let's see. I, I talked a little about his other books, like like talking a little about Birds of Prey. Oh, and I talked about the Bird of the TV show. Then he said he did not care for it. He thought the show was garbage. Um, he did what well, he says he did watch Arrow. Uh, he says that they created that a couple of his characters to make the show. I don't remember. Uh, it's like I, I was kind of agreeing with the and one character got killed off in like five minutes of an episode. Okay. So a couple of his villains. Um, he says initially that his, his Green Arrow run, which I told him I did like it. Um, and I told him it was like it's your second or third longest run in the, in the history of the title. And initially he had was going to do it for a year. He had to do it for three years. And here's one thing he did reveal. Um, I asked him why did he kill off Oliver Queen in issue 101. Um, shoot. 
Uh, the reason why he did that was because of editorial mandate. That that was really the reason why they killed him off, and that that is the reason why. And initially, they were going to have him. Initially, he what he wanted to do was what what happened in Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, which was basically having worse Green Arrow lost his arm, but he ended up dying. He ended up blowing up instead. Okay. Um, so that, that's the reason why I, well, it's a good thing I asked that. And basically, uh, Kelly Pudic, who was the previous writer of the book, basically he had set up, uh, Chuck Dixon's run. So, talking about that. Um, I did talk to him about Devin Grayson's controversial issue, Nightwing 93, when Tarantula raped Nightwing. Um, he, he was informed about that afterwards, and even he agreed that was not a good idea to do. Um, what else I talking about? Uh, he, t he, he talked about Denny's uh, several times uh, during our conversation. I actually went back to him a little later on uh, because I had gotten a book uh, from my friend Robert who came with me um, to Comic Con. It was his first Comic Con here went to, and I got him a Robin Annual, um, which Dixon did. Chuck Dixon did write. Uh, I had him sign it, and, he, and I gave it to my friend Robert, and he says, I asked him about um, uh, whose idea was to do this crossover, and he says he didn't remember. I kind of understand that because it's been a long time since he did it, but he, even he says this was not a good idea, especially since the, the whole, like, every new character was getting a new, idea, a new um, the same origin story getting hit by a space bug, and... Even he agreed with me about the whole thing of the the, the alien on the cover look look, look like the the creature from Alien. Yep, and uh, I think he did work on Blood Pack, and and he did agree with me that the only book that did survive all the new blood stuff was uh, Grant, uh, Garth Ennis's Hitman. He did agree with me on that. Um, it was nice to meet the guy. He was one of my favorite writers, and I had a blast talking to him. Okay, now moving on. Uh, this book right here, I picked this up at a booth um, uh, from a company called Creature Feature, who actually is based off of, here in, in Florida, but it's based off of South Florida. And uh, I actually got this for free because I guessed right on a certain um, um, ad that they were parroting. And I was asked about the little girl pull, pull down a little thing and show her butt crack. Uh, initially, now I was trying to guess that, like, like she was trying to guess, like, if, if I get it right, I get a free comic, and I guess Jodie Foster. I kind of guessed that because, yeah, she was in the movie with uh, Robert De Niro, and I said Jodie Foster, and said, yep. So I got this comic for free. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to reading this book. I would love to read more. If if this book is good, um, I might I might actually look forward to getting more comics from this. Now they mentioned that they've been around for at least for a couple years. That's probably the reason I never heard of them before. Now, I've heard of a lot of comic companies, especially some they're not even around anymore. But this company, never heard of this company before. So, I'm looking forward to reading this. Alright. Uh, next, I got this uh, issue, Rebel, signed by Tony Bedard. And he actually brought this up that originally this title was going to be called Legion. Because even he agreed with me, the Legion book was awesome. And... We, we actually talked about this book. We talked about Supergirl. I actually asked him about the Supergirl TV show because, well, he did write the comic. I asked him what he thought about the show. He says he actually liked it. He even loved the costume. Um, he uh, he did say that he did not care for the um, uh, the costume that uh, Ed McGinnis gave her in uh, the one that she had for her previous uh, volume five, uh, the one with show for her midsection. Yeah, he didn't care for that costume. Now. I did talk to him about the New 52 costume. He says he does not have a problem with it at all, except for the thong thing. And according to him, it was uh, Charles Scholl's idea for her to become a Red Lantern. And I did talk to him about Steve Orlando. I talked to him about Grant Morrison. So I've got a bunch of people. Um, there's one book here that I initially forgot this guy's name. I talked to him about Doom Patrol. I talked about a bunch of stuff with this, this guy. He was, a, of course, like Chuck Dixon. He was a blast to talk to. And... He says that the reason why that, that this title was called Rebels instead of called Legion, you know this as a continuation of Legion title. Now, here's the reason why. Because people thought it would be confusing. 
that's the reason why the confusion. I, yeah, he, he brought this up. But yeah, originally this was going to be called Legion with all the dots. But it was changed to Rebels in order to avoid confusion. And he did agree with me that the last, there was going to be one more. Uh, so did, I did saw all four trades that were released for Rebels. And he did agree with me that um, that uh, there was another trade going to be coming out and it was canceled. I didn't tell him that. I, I mean, I, I kind of knew the reason why the trade was canceled. Uh, low pre-door sales. And I came up with this really interesting idea of basically, and he and he thought this was a good idea as well, taking the, the first half of his run, put it in one trade with the annual, have the, have the second, second volume, just collect the second half of the thing. He actually agreed with me on that. He thought that was a good idea to do. Um, but yeah, he actually enjoyed doing this book. I And I did ask him why Starfire was added to the series. The editors wanted her in the book. That's the reason why. So... I got an exclamation for certain stuff. Um, yeah, it was nice to meet the guy. Now this one, um, oh yeah, there's a signature. I was looking for it. Um, if you look very carefully, like over here, that's Liam Sharp's signature. Yep. Um, when when I showed this to him, he was like, he was a bit confused, but he didn't see his name on the book, and he had to look inside of it because it had been years since he'd seen this book. Now. I never heard of this book, but I knew he was going to be at Comic Con, so I had to get something for him to sign because I couldn't find any Wonder Woman issues. So I figured I wanted one of his old books. So he actually does kind of remember this, and we talked a little bit about Wonder Woman and what's like work with Greg Rock. He says it's a blast, and says that um, I did bring up that I did watch him on that um, that DC Weird panel that was at WonderCon a few months ago. Uh, that actually was like seven months ago, I think it was. Where. Um, mentioned that he and Jim Lee were old friends. Apparently, they've known each other since 1991, so they've known each other for 25 years. Yeah. So I mentioned something to him that he actually remembers. Um, he did say that the um, after the live story, the next story arc for him is um, for one the woman. He's still on the book very regularly. Um, that the next arc is going to be called Truth, and. Um, I did ask him, is this going to be the regular format for Greg Rucker's run? You know, like, odd number issues be one arc and even number issues and another arc? And he says, yes, this is going to be the regular format of Greg Rucker's run for the book. And uh, Nicola Scott, who also is the artist for Black Magic, um, after uh, the year one story is wrapped up, she's going back to Black Magic. Yeah. She initially signed up to do six issues and then go back to Black Magic. And uh, there's going to be a fill-in artist who actually is going to take over as the, regular, as the uh, artist to replace her as the artist of the book. And I did ask him, is the Black Magic book still around? And, I said, and he said, yes, but the book is in the hiatus right now because of the Wonder Woman book. So, and I was going to meet Grant, Greg Rucka. I really wanted to meet the guy, but he wasn't there. I looked for him everywhere. I couldn't find him. Um... And I found out from one of the vendors that he actually was ill yesterday. Yeah, he was ill. That's the reason why he wasn't there. But, yeah, Liam Sharp. Um, let's see here. Um, I did pick up Sun Comics yesterday. Not much. I uh, picked up from, like, a couple places. I mean, I picked up uh, a couple books uh, by Paul Kemper. Guy. That was a guy I mentioned up with... Um, uh, Tony Bedard. I did tweet Tony Bedard and Chuck Dixon. It was nice to meet them and, I got, and how much I enjoyed meeting them and talking about their co comic book careers and stuff like that. Um, I, I haven't got back. They haven't got back to me about that, but I sent Tony Bedard a three-part tweet because, well, I just wanted to send it something like uh, it was nice to meet him. Uh, I just wanted to be nice. I, I didn't do the same thing for Chuck Dixon. Yeah, I did the same thing for him as well. Same same type of tweet. Um, how they respond back, or at least like the tweets I sent them. Okay. Now, the books I picked up were um, Fan the Stranger, Volume 3, issue number 2, by Paul Kepperberg. I also picked up uh, two issues of The Shadow. Was it two? Yeah, I think it was two. Actually, it was um, three issues of The Shadow. Uh, this was the volume done by uh, Andrew Helfer. Uh, I picked up issues four.
five. This is volume two of the series. This one lasted for 19 issues. Uh, and six. I also picked up the first issue of Paul Kepperberg's run for Doom Patrol. And I should show this off. That this is a um, gateful cover. They rarely even do that nowadays. Um, I have to show this off because this is a really cool cover. Um, and it's, uh, I know Eric Larson did write, draw this series briefly. Uh, okay, here's the cover. Full cover for New Patrol, uh, volume two, number one. This was actually a really good issue. I actually read this online. So I figured out because I saw this there, I'm like, yeah, you're coming with me because I actually enjoyed this book. Um, oh yeah, I also talked to Tony Bedard about, uh, uh, Grant Morrison for Doom Patrol and how the whole thing with the, um, Brain and Mishir Mala, I'm talking about Anlo Drake's run, I told my I, I actually am a fan of that run. So, yeah, I was picked up, uh, Justice League number two, I have issue one, I think I have issue four. Um, I'm hoping to pick up more issues of this, or, and, either that, or pick up the JLA, uh, trades, which I think there's only six, and I keep thinking, though, why did they stop at six? And finish collecting the run. Um, I also picked up two issues of the Spectre. I picked up uh, issue one of Doug Moak's Spectre, which is I read this run. This book is awesome. Now some people tend to think, oh, uh, not, none of Doug Moak's non batmore for DC is good, but his Spectre book is awesome. This is issue three. Um, yeah, and. I talked to people about Martian Manhunter. Oh, I talked to Tony. I hope you didn't wake up. I talked to Tony Bedard about Martian Manhunter, talking about uh, Justice League America, and about Steve Orlando in the book. And he doesn't have. And Tony Bedard actually likes that Steve Orlando's writing the book, and he's an actually no friend of his. He's known since he was 14. Yeah. Um, he actually does like the lineup for Justice League America. Um. Even he agrees that Supergirl should at least be part of the group, even Martian Manhunter. Mm -hmm. Now, I did pick up one trade when I was there, one trade. I got this 50% off. Now, the initial price of this book was $4.99. I got it for like 8 bucks. I got the first trade, first, I think this is the first of two trades for Peter J. Tomasi's run for The Outsiders. Now, I am a huge fan of The Outsiders. And this was awesome to get my hands on this book because I have always wanted to get my hands on more outsider stuff, and this is one way to prove it. I'm hoping to eventually get my hands on the entire, all the books for this volume. Now, this volume, as far as I can tell, uh, which lasted 40 issues, um, a majority of this book has been put into trade, but I think only the first, like, 37 issues been put into trade. Yeah, Richard was known as Batman and the Outsiders, but with issue uh, 15, which is simply just called the Outsiders, they dropped the name Batman and in the book. Um, the last three issues are repeat, uh, not in trade. I don't know why, but they're not. Um, but uh, there is one more trade that collects Peter J. Tomasi's run for the book. Um, I, I mentioned Peter Duke Tomasi to uh, Chuck Dixon, and I mentioned to him, I actually did enjoy his run, especially, I mean, of course, I really enjoyed Mark Wolfman's run. He probably did agree with me on that. I didn't say anything about it. But, um, yeah. I also talked about Birds of Prey people taking over, and I mentioned um, that uh, the writers of The Hundred are the writers of the book. Like, some people are hoping for Gail Simone. Um, I was hoping also for him as well. But there's something he did mention about that, that apparently he and DC are not in good terms right now. Despite the fact that they are collecting his run for, uh, they are, they are putting the trades, they're putting his, but, uh, they're putting, uh, Birds of Prey, Nightwing, and Robin in trades. Excuse me. Which are three books he worked on. And... And I, I did see at his table, he did have uh, Nightwing Volume 4, Love Bullets, which I think this was a recently released trade. Uh, Tony Bedard had um, another trade. Uh, he had uh, Supergirl Volume 2, 
at his table, and my friend Robert bought that from him. Apparently it was like 15 bucks for the thing. Um, I've read it. Uh, Tibia is a huge fan. He actually owns, I think he owns the first trade of that run. Um, yeah, it was one thing Tony Bedard and I talked about was, in fact, uh, Supergirl. And I told him, and I told him to his face, that I didn't hate his run for Blue Beetle. I thought it was okay. And he wasn't angry at me. I mean, I thought he'd be kind of disappointed. But he didn't get much of a reaction out of it. I told him I didn't hate his run. I thought it just was okay. But, um... I didn't mention to him about the Blueberry retrospective for um, uh, top to fourth. Why well, I didn't bring that to him at all? Um, the whole thing, Blueberry. I mentioned that briefly about his run, but he did. I did talk to him about um, the fact that Keith Giffen um, is the writer of the book now, and um, he agrees that the previous volume was awesome. He agrees with me on that. So, yeah. So, overall. I didn't get a chance to go around the con very much because I was talking to uh, Tony Bedard and Chuck Dixon for a while, and of course uh, Steve Horton. I talked a little bit to Liam Sharp. I, I saw Greg Land. I saw him. Did not talk to him. Did not have any books for him to sign. I didn't call him. Oh, hello. Hello. Sign this, Tracer. I didn't want to insult the guy. Um, I did tell, mention some people about Greg Land. Um, even they agree that. Um, the guy, the guy is a tracer, and when I told him he, that he's publicly admitted tracing him from porn, they weren't all that surprised. Um, Rob Liefeld, I wanted to get an autograph from him, but there was a small line, and he was charging twenty bucks an autograph. But if you had uh, New Mutants number eighty-six, New Mutants number ninety-eight, or X Force number one, he was charging sixty bucks for that autograph. I'm like, really, Rob? Really? Okay. Since the fact I didn't see that much of the trade, but it was a pretty good looking trade. It looked like it was a different room. Um, it looks like they didn't have much space like they did in uh, Tampa Comic Con. It looks like they took up one big ballroom uh, for this con because it looked kind of smaller than um, than Tampa Comic Con. That's why it looked. Maybe because it was the first year, I don't know. Uh, Nerdag said they had a booth there. I, I didn't see it. I. I, I wanted to look for it, but I just didn't have time. I was only there just for a few hours and I left. Mm -hmm. But I did join myself at Comic Con. So. What are you doing? Recording a video. You want to help mom get stuff ready for today? You didn't hear the kid crying? I better wrap up this video. Um, stay tuned for. Uh, my uh, comic corner got three episodes coming up so yeah that's it see you all next time bye